My name's Jane, I'm 57 years old. I've been very, very active uh, horse riding and outdoor sort of person for nearly my entire life. I actually work as an accountant down in London for two or three days a week um, and have been riding 10, 15 hours a week for the last 12 years, show jumping two or three times a week as well. Two years ago, this started to become more of a problem and I realised that I was suffering with pain, not necessarily in my back, but down the backs of my legs, into my buttocks, all the way down uh, to my calves. And I was realising that I was starting to lose control over my legs as well. Anything that I was doing, either at work or as a, out socially, started to become a problem. And I realised that I was going to have to, I stopped horse riding. I stopped doing a lot of the things I wanted to do at home and started to realise that my whole world was changing. Um, I'm a fiercely independent individual and that independence was slipping away and there was nothing I could do about it. Within the last two years, as that started to get worse, I started to take um, advice locally and was suggested that after an MRI scan, that from the, the actual positioning of the spine and the problems within it, that there was going to have to be some major surgery. We've got the scan here and you can see there's a 25% slippage of the actual spine itself. But here the spinal canal is so congested that there's no chance for any of the nerves to actually move um, to become free. And this was clearly an indication of what the problems were. The initial surgeon had suggested that the best opportunity for this uh, was decompression surgery, but also to put in some fixing um, rods so that the spine would be stabilised. But during the conversation, it became apparent that I wouldn't be back horse riding for maybe 18 months. Could be nine months if I was really lucky. But there was also the caveat that obviously there doesn't want to be any further damage done to the spine. And horse riding isn't uh, an exact science. Problems will occur. And just in day-to-day -day life, problems will occur. The more and more I thought about this, it was going to be such an invasive surgery but that appeared to be the only thing that I was being offered. I spent some time going round uh, the internet trying to find other suggestions. Met a, an osteopath down in London who suggested I came to see the professor. Came down about a month ago and going through the scans, it became apparent that there was another solution which wasn't as invasive, which would give me the opportunity to retain my independence or, or to retain it, uh, to get back to what I wanted, which was an active lifestyle, being able to get out uh, into the countryside, out doing gardening, more importantly, back horse riding. I had the surgery um, three weeks ago, and within three days, I was back out traveling home, which is a round trip of three to four hours, which was train, car, did that very comfortably. And the one thing that it didn't dawn on me until a couple of days after I got home, the biggest difference, when I got up in the morning, I was actually stood upright and I didn't have extreme pain. That hasn't happened for two to three years. And just mentally, the difference on that was phenomenal. Prior to Christmas, I'd got to the position where I was anticipating that I would be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. And that wasn't actually being ruled out by the people I was talking to. Um, that now doesn't look like that's even a possibility. So I can stop looking on the internet for wheelchairs and I can start looking for new saddles for the horse, which is a far more interesting option to take.